I think I was like 24, 5. I was tattooing for like 2 years, uh, doing like rubbish stuff. Uh. Then after that, just decided to venture into something that I really, really like, uh, which is like Japanese oriental stuff. Uh. Then I asked myself, uh, what, is the, what is the best place to learn? Of course, from the, the place of origin, uh, which is Japan. Uh. I had a friend there, so he helped me to like, you know, source around. So I told him that there's this particular artist that I really, really like. So he went up and then talked to the guy, which is my master. Lah. So I said, are you willing to teach a gaijin artist like is relatively new in the industry? Lah? Then the fellow said, ah, why not? You know, he, he is okay. Lah. It was quite surprising because it is known that, you know, Japanese, they are quite to themselves. Lah. When he said yes, then immediately I pack my stuff. I just fly there. Uh. You know, when you have only one thousand dollars, uh, you need to stay there for like a long time, uh, right? It's quite kanjong, uh, right? Then he also know that I I went over with nothing, right? Really, really nothing, uh. So I have to like start from zero, uh. Even though I've been tattooing for like the miserable two years, uh, doing like tribals and stuff like that, you know. So the basic stuff I know, uh, The basic stuff I know. Then I survive on doing small tribal and kanji. He will give me like a few thousand yen for like one tattoo, and that will bring me through for the next few days with minimal food and all lah. So I was living like a rat lah. So that's why the name ne Nezumi come in lah. I was thinking like, what, what can I do ah? Like, I, I don't study much lah, you know. But I like drawings ah. Then to think that if I need to go into advertising ah, or, or graphic design, I need to study and get the papers for it before other people can employ me lah. And I hate to go to school. Lah. Then I look at myself, I got a few tattoos here and there. I said, why not try out tattooing? It's like the next focus thing, right? right. So I, I sold my bikes, I sold my phone, I sold my computer. I, I took a bus to Thailand. I got no money to take, yeah, take, yeah. take flight. Right? So I took my army Alibaba back, I just go. I told my mom, hey, I'm going overseas. For how long? She, I said, I don't know. Lah. I just try, lah, you know? Yeah. Just, I got nothing to lose. Right? Yeah. So I reached Southern Thailand. Then the tour agency got those mini bus to elsewhere, right? So I look, look, look. Where's nice, ah? Uh? Eh, Koh Samui seems like a nice place, right? right. right. Island, right? So I took a bus to Koh Samui, took a ferry there. So the first few days, I checked into like those 70 baht per night accommodation yeah. because I know I need to budget myself, right? So second, three, uh, second or third day on way, I start to look for studios. Then I found one studio. I just like got some tattoos there. You know, you want to be an apprentice, you need to get tattoos from the shop first, right? Slowly, I talked with him. Then I was drawing, you know, sketching. He said, hey, actually, you can sketch. Huh? I said, uh, a little bit, lah, you know, I, I, I like to draw. Then he, he asked me, uh, he asked me, you want to be an apprentice? I said, okay, lah, you know. Then I don't need to open my mouth, no so paise. Right? Yeah. Then, then, yeah, lah, then just like that, I stayed there for six months. Yeah, I did visa extension, all this kind of thing. Lah. So I stayed there for six months. And bear in mind, uh, in Thailand, I only did like, Two tattoos eh, in, on myself. Small, small little tribal shit, lah, you know. Yeah. So I went back home. Then I started to call all my those abing friends. Lah. Like, hey, I'm doing tattoo now. You wanna do that? Fifty dollars only. Full back. You know when you're young, you become very ambitious, right? Yeah. You wanna do like big stuff. Yeah. But dude, you, you cannot even hold a machine well. Like, what wow, it's damn sad. Lah. Luckily, some of my friends are still my friends, though. <laughs> yeah. Because you know you screw up their backs, right? I mean, who never screw up their friends' back, right? Or who never screw up their friends' tattoo, right? I chop off. Really. So after working like probably six, seven months at home, then I think, la, open my own shop la. Right. Hey, six months there, eh. wow. wow, wow, eh, bro. You're very ambitious. Then I just open my own shop. Then the first shop is at the old Brilliant Hotel la, at Orchard Road there. Yeah, then that is actually like my classroom like that. To be very honest, uh, nobody know me. Then I just start to do any kind of tattoos that walk in, uh, any kinds. Uh. So I start to like do proper lines, proper colouring, proper shading. Dude, I'm doing biomech then. Eh. Yeah. Wow, you go and ask people like Augustine do biomech, they should laugh one no. But it's like that at that point of time you don't know what's your direction. Right? So you treasure every piece of skin that you have. Right? You just whack and whack and whack. After that I shut down the shop because I wanted to start travelling. Right? Yeah. Then that's when Japan come into the picture. Right? I mean definitely travelling made me open my eyes a lot. Right? Like the first time I, I go overseas for work uh, was to Manchester and I was only tattooing for like one year. Uh. There's this one artist that I know, uh, he's called Dave. Uh. So he's from Bolton. I met this guy uh, at KL 
airport when I was transiting on my way to Japan. We were at the smoking room, then he saw me, I saw him, then we had tattoos, then we start to like, you know, talk to each other. Then he said, oh, he went to attend the Saba convention or something like that. And then we exchanged like contacts. So when I wanted to go overseas to work, of course, he's the first person and the only person that I know overseas back then. So I called him, I said, hey, can I go there for work, for, for guest, guest work? Uh? So he said, yeah, 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 why not? So when I when I go there, it was like a learning experience for me because I was still very green then, you know, very, very new. I, I met all sorts of artists, like, like really, really good legends. You know, last time when we go to Borders, right, we, we read magazines, there's many like uh, UK magazine, right? So we see like, we see like the names uh, on, on the magazine, uh, it's actually friends of Dave. Yeah, so I managed to meet them and then we travel around UK, we go to conventions. Like last time there's very good convention, like Derby convention, all this. So we went there with the legends, you know. Then I, I, I find that them being like so experienced and all, uh, but they have no attitude whatsoever. They talk to everybody like, we are all the same. So maybe that influenced me to like to accept everybody as who they are. La. No need to like like look at like different people with a different from a different level. La. So to me everybody's the same. La. One day the younger generation is gonna overtake you. Because right? okay. technology is so scary now. Now it's like you see those six month tattoo artists, dude, they look like they're tattooing for 10, 16 years, yeah. Seriously, it's damn crazy. Oh. People think that my style is traditional Japanese, uh, but mine is not traditional Japanese. Mine is, I would say, in between of traditional and new traditional. Because my background is very traditional, but my subject is not traditional at all. Because that's just the way I like to do it. Uh. For me, yes, Japanese tattooing have many rules and regulations. You cannot do this, you cannot do that. I do my best to stick to those regulations, uh, the, 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 the stiff rules. Uh. I try, to, try my best to stick to it. But the subject-wise, I like it a little bit more with uh, dimensions. Not like those super traditional flat stick lines. In Japanese tattooing, Wabori itself, there's so many different types of it. I don't want to be like classified under traditional or new traditional. I can use the traditional background, but I, I implement my own subjects into it. Like if you, if you notice for traditional uh, Japanese piece, right? Like be it a bodysuit. You know, body should take years to complete. Right? If the client start with like a half sleeve of maybe a snake and cherry blossom, then the whole body is going to be cherry blossom. Maybe. Because based on the very simple rule of different flowers doesn't bloom in the same season. So if you have cherry blossom, and that's part of the skin, right? So whatever connection that it goes to, like the back piece, the front panel, the leg sleeve, it has all to be cherry blossom. That's why we always use the same flower. So uniformity is very beautiful. Yeah, you can, you, can, you can have like the same kind of flowers across the whole bodysuit. It will look so perfect. Yeah. Rather to, to have like four different kind of flowers all together with different colors. It's not my kind, my, my type of tea lah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, but that is one of the very, very basic and simple rules lah. It's like, hey, I, I'm paying this amount of money already. I want to have a lot of stuff in a small constrained area. And then I tell them I'd rather not do it lah. I, I will do my best for you lah because of course money I want to earn. But then, the client walking out, right? You are bringing my work out. Okay, to be honest, I don't, I don't really care about what their friends see. Uh. I care about when tattoo artists see my work. That is very important for me, because for friends to see, uh, they can say whatever they want, but they are not professional, right? So a lot of people they will say, "Hey, my friends say, uh, my friends say this, my friends say that." Then I ask, "What your friend doing, man? What's your, what's his job? Oh, selling chicken rice." Then ask him to judge the chicken rice, ah, uh, right? Then I'll say like, why not you try to walk into a tattoo shop? See what other tattoo artists say about this piece. That is the most genuine and, and real comments uh, from a professional. Yeah, so for me, it's important that my fellow tattoo artists feel that it's good work, not the client friend. First, originality. That one is first and foremost. For me, it's originality because like what we said before, technology, uh, now you Google, like uh, Instagram, uh, you download one picture, you trace out the line, you can replicate the whole tattoo already. 
but after people paying tens of thousands for a bad piece, right? You wouldn't want them to go to the beach and then, hey, that's your replica. Yeah. Or oh, that's the original, you're the replica, or whoever lah, you know. Of course they'll feel sore. Right? Then if they are paying premium price, they should get premium product. So to me, the most important thing is originality. Second is composition. Third is technique. Because once you have originality, then you have to plan your background and, and all the whatnots. Ah. So number three, why I say technique? Because technique is something that you can brush up. As long as you can do proper line, no matter how fucked up the colour is or how badly the shading is done, we can touch it up until it's perfect. But once the fundamental lines is laid down, right, if it's screwed up, right, no matter how good colouring technique, how good shading technique, it's still going to be a nicely done bad tattoo. But I would rather to have a badly done nice tattoo because I still can save it. Do you prefer for your clients to give you artistic freedom or...? Okay, I have clients coming in, hey Augustine, do whatever you want. I mean, if, if there's something at the back of my head that I really want to do, then of course that's nice lah, you know. But preferably, I hope that they come in and they tell me what is the, like, the basic stuff that they want. Lah. Like you want dragons, you want this, you want that. Okay, then whatever is, can be composed inside this piece, I tell them, yes, it's, it's possible. So if it is a bit too much or it doesn't complement the body structure or what, I'll tell them, maybe you should just change to another uh, subject or something like that. There's a client definitely coming in uh, with like a sleeve piece and they say, uh, I want this one on my back. Dude, it's, it's totally different. Right? You know, back is flat surface, whereas sleeve, full sleeve is cylindrical. Right? So we, we have to let them understand because we cannot blame the client because they, they, are, they don't know what, they, they just see it, it's nice. They, they want it. We have to educate them that, you know, whatever you see like this, like this, right, might not look good on that particular area of body. Or if they are really like blur, right, they say, I don't know what I want. Then they say, okay, tell me what you don't want. So we play the other way around. Tell me what you don't want. Okay, you don't want this, one, that. Then we can narrow down what is possible. Right? I think a bit of input is, is important because if the client say, do whatever you want, then sometimes you, you spend days and days and come up with the sketch, right? You show them, uh, this is not what I want. Of course, you feel a bit. You want to, you know, like you told me what whatever I want, what? Then now I show you the one. Then what? You know, yeah. So it's good that they give us a bit of direction. The best is tell us what you don't like, yeah. what you cannot have on your body. Yeah. Then it's much easier. Yeah. Person, uh. I always like to draw out of my head. Be it is a unfamiliar subject. I, I try my best to, to come up with my own rendition of it. Because I feel that, like I said, originality is very important, right? So I, I, I will make sure that all my clients will have something that is one-off for, for, for them. What I always do is I will draw and then I will, I will let my mind rest for a while because you know sometimes when you spend too much time drawing right at the, at the end of the 3 hours uh, you'll feel that your drawing is damn nice eh? so after the end of 3 hours after your, well, your hard work right you'll feel that wow this drawing is damn nice then, but if you never digest a drawing uh, overnight right you do it immediately on someone right maybe the 4th hour you look at it and like, actually there's some mistake there so to me it's important is when I draw I let the thing rest I go and have a sleep when I wake up, I look at it again. If it look correct, then I will proceed further. You know, like 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 animal anatomy, all this kind of thing. Sometimes you get too engrossed in draw drawing. You cannot tell what is wrong, what is right. But after you wake up with a fresh mind, you look at it. Uh, if it's correct, uh, like the whole structure is correct, then we work further on it. Uh. A lot of people say, drawing is a talent. It's rubbish. Uh. Drawing can practice one. Uh really really drawing drawing can really 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 practice on you try to draw something that you're not familiar with 200 times by the end of 200 you can freely draw that subject in whichever angle that you want really you know all artists certainly have a little bit of ego there here and there so it's very difficult and it's very annoying to teach 
someone that wants to teach you back. So it is better that you come in with zero ego. You just absorb what we say because we have been in this industry I'm almost I'm 20 years already. Eh. So all the long route, short route, all I've gone before already. So whatever I tell you, uh, it's really to help you the easy way. So you don't need to go knocking against the wall, come back, you can do, you know. If, you, if I'm teaching you, I won't point to you the wrong way. Yeah. yeah, so just have that little bit of trust in me, that's all. Client come in, I'll tell them it's going to be very painful. Very, very painful. Very, very painful. Like, the worst pain that I can ever get. No, you need to prep them like this. Yeah. Then after that, inside their mind, they'll be like, shit, I'm going to die, I'm going to die. Then after that, when you go down, right, they're like, hey, it's not so bad. I always pre prepare them for the worst first, uh, you know. But I know I'm quite painful. Uh. So, so it's like, you let them know it's very, very bad, right? Then their expectation different already, uh, and they can last longer. If you tell them, it's okay, one, it's really okay, one. But then when you go down, uh, they're like, fuck, it's not like that. Like, you lie to me. Then then maybe the whole session just lasts for one hour. You cannot even complete the, the lines. Yeah, each thing I do maximum three, four hours. Yeah. I think it's a very... Uh, comfortable progress the fastest i complete like 20 hours three months are fastest one but that one really dedication uh. you come in every week oh. yeah, yeah. yeah and it depends on how deep how deep the pocket is also because it's you know tattoo is not cheap yeah, yeah, yeah. and but some clients they just want to finish it quick uh. so i'll i'll give them like back to back bits like interval two weeks oh. so that's fastest three months uh, faster. Come on, I face it. Uh. It's like everybody knows that fairer skin is the nicest to work on because the contrast is there. Right? But I do have like dark skin clients coming in. So when it's dark skin, of course, we cannot recommend color because it's going to look very muted and you know. So we just like tell them black and gray is the way to go. Uh. If you ask me, I would definitely prefer to tattoo on fairer skin. Uh. That one is an honest truth. Uh. Not being racist or what, uh, but then everybody deserves a nice tattoo. But not everybody can carry off colouring. Yeah. And anyway, black stays much longer than colours. Even now, I'm doing majority mostly black and a little bit of highlights of colour because I find that it can stand the test of time. Throughout the years, they still look the same. Yeah. Some, some tattoo artists, like, especially those, uh, those hyper-realism ones, the amount that they overlay uh, is crazy. Eh? Three, four, five times final one with uh, like white highlights. Some some of the artists uh, they, they do really really well. Lah. But some they hit well, after the healing like you know we've seen before like before and after it's like hmm looks quite different from the photograph. Ah. Yeah because the skin is overworked. For mine is yes I, I do overlapping but when I lay down with grey I will let the grey heal before I overlap with colour. So the trauma is not as bad lah, really. Yeah. Photograph ah, always looks good lah. Come on, that's technology now. Eh. So but if you look like side by side with the real thing, right, you definitely can tell the difference. Lah. That tattoo would never glow. Lah. Yeah, it will cheat your eyes to tell you it's glowing, lah, but in real life you look at it, it, it there's no neon. Lah. There's no neon colours. Lah, huh? You know what I mean, right? There's no neon colours. A younger times, of course, is my teacher, lah, you know. Horisuna from Osaka. He he is the one that tell me, like, we draw everything that we do ourselves. Yeah. So the originality idea come from him. Lah. So after that will be definitely people like Philip, Philip, Luke, you know, the legends, lah, you know. Because their composition is really out of the world. Lah. And the kind of speed that they tattoo, lah, like complete a full bag in one day. Yeah, that one is, is really crazy. Uh. Recently, I really like this uh, Johans van from Sweden, I think. Yeah, I think his technique and, and his originality, uh, like his food dog, his dragons, you can see the signature in, 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 in the drawing. Uh. So, so he's one of my favourite artists now. I hope that those potential tattoo getters, uh, please, please check the artist's portfolio before committing to a tattoo. Because uh, we are tattoo artists, we are not magicians, you know. So a lot of people, they come in with like a full back piece. Then they say, I want to do a cover up. Honestly, la, you use like a piece of paper that's been scribbled already, right? 
and then you, I ask you to color over it, uh, just using color pencil. Can you cover up the old lines? It's cannot one. So I, I always want to tell the client, we are not magician, you know. We can do our best to camouflage, but it won't be a hundred percent thing. And don't don't go to a oriental artist, people like me, uh, and say, wow, I really like your work. Can I have a portrait of my dog? You know, it's like you're going to Buntongki and you're asking for bakute. It's really, really, it's really weird. Seriously, I've been to conventions, uh, they are like flipping through my books. Uh, you know my books is like those big pieces and all. Wow, oh, really, really nice work. You know, can I have an infinity sign? I'm like, <laughs> when when you look for artists, you go for what they're good, what they're good at lah. Don't try to be funny and ask them for something else because there's other better artists that can perform this genre of work better than us. So just go to them. I'm tattooing out of Singapore Electric in 24 Bali Lane.